soap makers. So in this video, I am going to talk to you kind of briefly about using a lie calculator to formulate recipes and to double check recipes. So my name's Amanda, I'm with loveandsoap.com and I run a Facebook group for soap makers called Saponification Nation. And in it, we have a lot of new soap makers who get a little confused when it comes to using a lie calculator. So I thought I would do a quick video um, giving some tips and kind of giving you my thoughts on some of the soap calculators that are out there. So first of all, one of the most common soap calculators that, that soap makers recommend and use is soapcalc.net. So you can find that at soapcalc.net. And once you get there, click on soap calc lie calculator and that will take you to the calculator. Now, Soap calc isn't my favorite calculator because I think it can be really confusing for new soap makers. Um, you know, there's a lot going on, there's all these ads, there's all these input fields, and then I think the output that you get from it is even more confusing, which I'll talk about. But I do think that, you know, you should get on it, you should learn it, um, experiment with it, and find out if it is the right lie calculator for you. And so it's pretty easy to use. Here are some of the inputs that you give it. Number one, the type of lye. Uh, you can choose between NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide used for solid soap, or you can choose KOH, which is potassium hydroxide used for liquid soap. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the NaOH, the sodium hydroxide. Next, you'll choose if you wanna do pounds, ounces, or grams. I'm going to go with ounces today. And then next you choose your water amount. Um, you can leave it 38%. To me, that adds a little more water than what I like in a recipe, uh, especially when I'm doing palm-free recipes with, which are high in olive oil. So for me personally, I go with the 33% solution, which rounds to about one part lye, two parts water. So I take my lye amount and times it by two, and that will equal my water amount. Okay, but you can play with using uh, different amounts to see what you like. I typically do five to eight percent for my super fat. So today I'm just gonna stick with five percent. That's pretty common. And then fragrance, I'm gonna delete this because I don't uh, calculate it like that, okay? So let's enter a recipe. So we're gonna do Coconut oil, olive oil, shea butter. This is my pretty standard recipe. It's one that I really, really like. Rice bran. All right, now here you can do percentage or ounces. So if you have a recipe uh, that is given to you in percentages, then you would enter the total amount of ounces of oils you want to make, and then enter the percentages here. I actually know my ounces. I'm going to make 32 ounces of oils, which fits in a 10 inch silicone loaf. Okay, so this mold holds recipes that are made using about 32 ounces of oil. If you want to do the high peaky tops, then I would do 34 to 36 ounces of oil. <clears throat> Okay, so going back to soap calc, I'm gonna enter in my numbers. Okay, so let's see, 22, 22, 26, 22, 23, 31. All right, so that's 32 ounces. After you enter in your oils, hit calculate, and to view or print the recipe, hit this button, and then it will give you a recipe sheet. Now for me personally, this is way too, too busy, too complicated, there's too much information on it. Uh, you might decide that for you, this is perfect, that you like seeing all these numbers and, and different things. Um, so let's take a look. We have our total weight of oils, um, we have our super fat, we have our lye concentration, uh, lye to water ratio, again it's that two to one, of course they have to have that in it because it's a percentage. Um, so it gives you a lot of information. Now I ignore all this and I ignore all this and I ignore all this. Um, this, all of this 
information might be helpful for new soap makers if you're just starting out, but I actually feel like soap calc isn't really accurate when it comes to telling you how a recipe can be. And I think also a lot of soap makers take it really literally and they don't jump outside of what soap calc tells you to do. So I think it can kind of pigeonhole you. It can stress you out as a new soap maker. Um, and it's not really accurate. Okay, for example, if we do a 100% olive oil soap, it'll tell us that the cleansing is zero. And that doesn't fall within their range, and so it's not going to be a good soap. And I just don't agree with that. Um, how many of you have made Castile soap? It's very mildly cleaning, but it's still cleansing. And so when you extrapolate that out into different recipes and different formulas, I just don't think it's very accurate. Um, same thing with hardness. So it's totally up to you if you want to look at these numbers and use them. I think they can be helpful um, as a guide, but please don't take them literally. If you're formulating a recipe and the cleansing, you know, falls under or over, um, you know, any of these values, it's okay. Try the recipe and see if you like it. And then once you try it, you can modify it based on what you're shooting for. Okay. Um, another thing that makes this not accurate is your super fat kind of plays into a formulating role when it comes to um, the conditioningness of your soap. So if we were to put 100% coconut oil in a recipe, um, the cleansing for it would be super high. And a lot of people would say, oh, I shouldn't make that soap. But if you make 100% coconut oil soap, with 20% super fat, it is a really nice bar of soap. And so that extra oil left unsaponified um, takes away the harshness of the coconut oil soap. And so again, this isn't going to be very accurate for that soap when you adjust the super fat. And so my main advice is, you know, get on here and play, learn about it, but don't take this real literally and don't get hung up on it. I know a lot of soap makers who just start and they will literally play on soap calc and make 20 recipes before they even make a batch of soap. So just decide on a recipe and just make it. And then after you make it, you can evaluate it. Does it need more lather? Does it need less? Is it too drying? Is it too soft? And then you can modify it. And if you go to loveandsoap.com and do a search for modify a recipe, you'll find two really good blog posts that talk about um, how you can modify a recipe based on what you're wanting to change. So is there not enough lather? Then these are some of the things you would do. Is it too drying? These are some of the things you can do and so on. And so when you formulate like this, I feel that you get better experience. And um, you know, so don't always rely on a soap calculator. All right, so you can print this sheet out. So you can put it in your soap binder, keep it for batches. Um, so that's that. So you would just uh, print the recipe here. Okay, or you can save it as a PDF if you want to save it digitally. All right, now my favorite lie calculator is actually at thesage.com. And let me show you why I like it so much. Okay, so you go to thesage.com, click on lie calculator and then you can enter your information. So let's call this lavender soap created by me. I'm gonna go with ounces. Again, we wanna make hard soap, so sodium hydroxide. I ignore this and I ignore the sodium lactate. I don't need the basic instructions. I ignore the liquid and all of this. You can certainly fill this in, but I typically print out the recipe sheet and then just write this by hand. But you can certainly fill it in if you want. So let me put in my recipe again. Okay, once you enter in your recipe, and again it's in ounces, calculate lie. And you're given this sheet. And to me, this is so much easier um, than getting that soap calc sheet, which has so much information on it. It can be confusing, distracted. Um, it gives me a bit of anxiety. And that's just for me. You'll find what lie calculator you like. <clears throat> and so over here, here's our oils. 
Here's our ounces and the percentages. It's 32 ounces of oil total. So over here is the lye table, which gives us the range of super fat that we would use in our soap. And so I like to do 5%, so that's pretty typical, but you can go up to eight. Um, so I would do 4.55 ounces of lye. And then when it comes to water, if you look over here, it gives you a range of water that you can use. And uh, so you can use anywhere from eight to 12 ounces. And like I said, when we were using soap calc, I like to use two times my lye for water. So since we have 4.55 of lye, I would simply use nine ounces of water. And for me, that just keeps everything simple. It's easy to calculate and I'll adjust it if I have a special situation. So a special situation would be soaping with 100% olive oil to make a Castile soap. So that would be a very soft soap. It would take forever to trace. It would have a really long cure. And so to combat that, I would simply take my lye and times it by 1.5. And so that would be quite a water discount, but it helps with the curing and the movement of the soap and it setting up and being able to unmold it, okay? So that is one instance where I would jump away from doing two times my lye. Another instance, if you use large amounts of um, solid oils, so things like palm oil, shea butter, high coconut oil, then you want to have more liquid in your recipe because it'll help it stay more fluid. And so you might use uh, 2.5 times your lye if you're using palm, uh, tallow, lard, and things like that that make a harder bar of soap. So it's completely up to you. Um, but, you know, experiment and then you can modify from there. And so usually I use the sage.com. This is their lie calculator. To me, it's super simple. It's easy. The output is nice. Um, I usually just print this page out and it just prints out the recipe. It doesn't print out all the rest of their website. And then here in this blank space, I'll write down any notes about, you know, what I add fragrance or essential oils or additives. I'll punch three holes in it. I'll put the date on here. And then that is what I put um, for my, my batch sheet. Um, typically. So that is that. So again, there's soapcalc.net, there's the sage.com. If you want to use your phone, um, the only uh, calculator app I've used is Brambleberries, and I really like it. I haven't had any issues with it. I think that's why I haven't tried any others. I think SoapCalc has one too, but there's a couple apps that kind of work the same way, and they'll save them. Uh, save your recipes and the cool thing about Brambleberry is they'll send you notification when a soap is ready So if you save it in a certain way, it'll send you um, A notice saying hey this soap is ready. It's done with its cure. So that's kind of cool um, So those are those now I wanted to mention a little bit about my formulating cold process soap recipes e-course so if you want to learn more about formulating soap recipes, this e-course will really help you out. And in it, I do talk about how to use a lye calc. Um, so I kind of go over what I just went over with you guys, but also a really, really lots of more information. So I talk about oils and soap making. We go over the fatty acid profiles and there's a handy chart you can download. I talk about creating single oil soaps and why that's important, you know, to learn their properties. Then we talk about modifying a recipe. I go over water. So water usage in soap is really important. It can make a soap move faster, move slower. Um, it can make a big difference. And then I talk about choosing a super fat and why you would want a high one, why you would want a low one, um, and some considerations there. And then we talk about how to modify a recipe. So if you have a recipe that you made and you think, oh, I you know, it needs more lather or it needs to be more conditioning. Um, I talk about how to do that. And then when you're formulating as well, I talk about how to substitute an oil. And so I really show you how to apply the fatty acid profile chart um, to all of this formulation because you can tell a lot by the fatty acid profile of a certain uh, fat or oil. Okay, and then a lot of times when we first start soap making, it can be hard to know how much your mold will hold, and so I teach you how to calculate that. 
And then also resizing. So if you found some good recipes online, but your mold holds bigger or smaller batches, I show you how to do that. And then one thing I also do is I talk about going palm free. And so there's a lot of soap makers out there um, that want to make palm free recipes. And I show you how to do that. You can't simply remove the palm oil and replace it with one other oil. It needs to be a blend of oils. And based on the fatty acid profiles of different oils, I talk about what my favorite uh, formulations are for that. Now you can substitute palm, tallow, and lard. So if you aren't, a, you know, if you aren't against animal products in your soap, then you can do a one-for-one -one substitution of palm oil with either lard or tallow. All right, and then we talk about creating recipes from scratch. I provide some starting ratios. And then we talk about some more specific formulas. So hard bars of soap, slow moving for swirling. And then we talk about how much essential oil and fragrance oil to use. And so I've gotten a lot of really great feedback um, about this e-course. It has a lot of information. If you're new to soap making, it really gives you a great foundation uh, for formulation, for formulating recipes. And so each lesson is delivered as a video, it's either a screencast like this, or it's me actually on video talking. And so it's fun to watch, entertaining, and it is packed full of information. So I think anyone who's wanting to really get control of formulating and who wants to move away from simply using recipes they found online, this would be great for you because it will give you um, some really good knowledge about working with different oils and formulating. All right, so I hope this uh, video was helpful and that you jump on my calculators and feel a little more um, secure with yourself in working with them. So again, join our Facebook group, Saponification Nation, and I'll see you there.